Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Yurik Lewandowski, uh, who will tell us about Yang's Mills theory of the conformal Cartan connection and applications to gravity. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, there may be many different introductions to, to this subject, but maybe most up-to-date introduction would be that these days people often study space times that are so they are so called asymptotically de Sitter, which means that that far away they they are they look like de Sitter space time and a more exact definition is that there exists a conformal rescaling such that space time is has a, a boundary and this boundary is space like and in according to 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 real metric this boundary is far in infinity but after this rescaling it is it is located so, so it is located in a finite position and these days mathematicians consider initial value problem for, for Einstein equations on this conformal boundary and then it involves two a little incompatible uh, uh, frameworks. So on one hand, because of this conformal rescaling, it's convenient to use some conformal methods, some conformally invariant structures. On the other hand, since we are interested in Einstein equations, and Einstein equations are not conformally invariant, uh, we cannot just rely on those conformally invariant geometry. At, at some point, we have also we have to to, to invoke. Einstein, Einstein equations and and and, Einstein, and and just Riemannian geometry. Uh, so, uh, a colleague of mine, Kaminski, recently found an error in the proof of some two professional guys working on this, Piotr Khrushchev and Lars Anderson, and and he 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 fixed this error and actually proved his own proof. Uh, it is in communications on mathematical physics, but but in the meantime, we since this is my young colleague, I I told him how some elements of I mean what he was doing is was functional analysis. So I'm not talking about functional analysis, but I I, I could we could uh, study how we can use old-fashioned conformal geometry invented by by Cartan to describe some structures which <clears throat> emerge in this case. So let me first recall. Uh, so the plan of the talk is I will very quickly uh, define, recall definition of the Cartan connections, and which is a little tricky because Cartan invented, I think Cartan invented all the connections, but, but the connections we usually use are not <laughs> called Cartan connection. <laughs> there is special, <laughs> And Cartan connection is not what you usually call a connection. So this is even more tricky. So, th so that's why I will have one slide on this. Then I will define what is normal conformal Cartan connection. So this is a connection which is assigned to a conformal class of metrics. So given metric tensor up to conformal rescaling, this connection it will be uniquely defined and in it codes some conformally invariant information about this. Uh, geometry. And then we will restrict ourselves to four-dimensional geometries. And uh, and I will introduce the Bach tensor. And why is Bach tensor? Uh, I think that actually this Bach was was a brother of 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 the of the Bach we know. But, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Maybe somebody else is somebody else's brother. But, but but it seems to me that people usually ask who who, who is this Bach, and it turns out that this is uh, <laughs> our Bach, which which uh, uh, composed some music. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, so so uh, Einstein equations are not conform conformally invariant. However, there is some conformally invariant conditions satisfied by solutions to Einstein equations. So this is um necessary condition for to 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 be solution to Einstein equations it is not sufficient 
and I will also mention how we how we know it is sufficient. It's not sufficient, but I will not go to detail. So this is why this Bach. Uh, so the vanishing of the Bach tensor is this conformally invariant condition that is necessary for a given conformal class to contain a solution to, to the Einstein equations with cosmological constant. So it's not surprising that if we want to describe in conformally invariant way uh, some uh, solutions to Einstein equations, then this, this Bach tensor shows up. And finally, and this is actually, this was the main part of the talk, I would like to show you how we can use um, the normal conformal Cartan connection to describe a conformal edge of asymptotically the sitter space-time. So it's very easy to, to understand the idea. Uh, this conformal boundary of conformal completion of space-time is infinitely far and some uh, some uh, uh, quantities which we want to use, which we normally use in the bulk, they uh, they are, uh, diverge when we go there. So people introduce something which is called holographic renormalization, and then they subtract from something to kill this infinity and to have a dead, a finite result, and and it works. It is uh, uh, people who do holography. So, so actually. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be asymptotically the sitter. It may be asymptotically anti the sitter. But probably I will stick to well. There are some subtle differences between conformally between asymptotic the sitter and anti the sitter. So sometimes you cannot just assume that that cosmological constant takes either negative value or positive. Sometimes you have to be careful. And I know I'm sure that all the formulae which I will write are correct for positive cosmological constant. However, you will see yourself. Maybe, maybe, maybe they are just uh, uh, to some point that it will be. It will not matter. Then, when we, when we use specific coordinates and, and specific boundary, it will be asymptotically asymptotic decider. So, so uh, I was uh, explaining that when we introduce some symplectic structures, which you usually introduce uh, for, for uh, uh, solutions to Einstein equations or to this in physics, then they diverge in. On this conformal infinity, we know what to do. We we holo, holographically normalize them, and, and then we have finite uh, structure. However, it turns out that if we use uh, this normal conformal Cartan connection, then nothing diverges, and it is just uh, just finite because it's unsensitive on conformal rescaling. So it is it continues to be finite and under rescaling, and we just for free obtain uh, obtain the uh, uh, finite description on 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 uh, 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 this conformal boundary. Okay, so the to define Cartan connection, we need we need a bigger Lie group than a smaller Lie group, which is a sub closed subgroup, and the principal fiber bundle such that the smaller group is the structure group of this bundle, and dimension of the of the manifold of this principal fiber bundle it should be equal to the dimension of G. So dimension of P is the dimension of G. So upon those conditions, a Cartan connection of P on P is a Lie algebra of G valued one form, which which has the first two properties are the same as in the case of the uh, regular connection on principal fiber bundle. So contracted with any of the vector fields generated by the action of H, it just reproduces the corresponding element of the Lie group. And it has the same transformation law uh, with respect to the right action of this group H on the bundle, the same as as, as the, 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 the standard connection. The difference is here. The difference is that it doesn't annihilate any tangent vector except for zero. So, so this is what 
this is the difference what makes it carton connection as opposed to just just connection in principle fiber bundle and the curvature of this connection is defined as usual by the usual formula as this that it is also a horizontal form as in the case of of um, uh, of of the usual connection so the best example and and at, at the same time it illustrates what we try to generalize in this way is if our principal fiber bundle is just the group g itself and and the action of h is just the right action on the group and so this defines the principal fiber bundle and then for the connection for for cartan connection we 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 can take the maurer cartan form and it satisfies all those conditions and the curvature of the maurer cartan form is zero so so the way cartan came up with his definitions was that he would start with this case and he would call it the model flat case and then he would think how to generalize it so it's not so that it's not flat anymore but other conditions are still satisfied and, and this is the the generalization so you can think of the cartan connection as maurer cartan connection on on the group but then p is not anymore the group it has the same dimension uh okay so uh, now i will turn to the uh, conformal cartan to the conformal Cartan connection. So in the case of conformal Cartan connection, given uh, given a, so, so since we do physics, we 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 usually consider uh, geometries with some signature. They, they are not just Riemannian geometries. So there is some manifold M and there is some metric tensor G. However, signature signature is uh, is uh, P minuses and Q pluses. So the group of transformations that preserves this, this metric is O P plus one, Q plus one. And since here we talk about, about Lie, group, Lie groups, then, then it's the same as SO P plus one, Q plus one. And the structure group H, the subgroup, is the so we can we have to 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 choose a null direction in in some so this this group acts in 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 the tangent space so 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 tangent space is 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 a single single vector space and in this ve single vector space if we choose a, a null direction then then the group that preserves that that null direction is for 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 h we take this group now the question is why so so I mean, for this definition, you don't have to know why the definition will be uh, self-consistent. But but if we want to understand the intuition behind this, uh, the idea is that given a conformal geometry, so given, so suppose that this is M, a given conformal geometry on M, uh, what we do is we construct space-time, which is uh, which has dimension uh, bigger, uh, 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 which has dimension of m plus two. Then we find, but but th then we find a null cone in this space time, and uh, uh, any section of this null cone has. So, so, so this space-time is as flat as possible. So the only non-flat part is this geometry, and and in other directions is so. So the geometry of this cone is such that every slice of this cone has a 
the same conformally the same geometry the only difference is that if we choose different slice then the uh, then then some conformal factor changes so this is the case if we consider a cone in let's space time in minkowski space time or a little more generally if we consider a null surface such as so-called shear it vanishes and and it has only expansion so so there are such null space times and so, so now the idea is that instead of talking about this conformal geometry, let us introduce this bigger space time. In this bigger space time, let us introduce some, some bigger geometry, some geometry, such that our conformal class is uh, given by geometry induced on, uh, on slices of this cone. So, so that's why we increase the, and for this to work, if, if this geometry has signature PQ, this geometry has to have signature P plus one, Q plus one. And, and then uh, our Cartan normal, uh, our normal conformal Cartan connection actually can be understood as a connection defined here on this on this space time as the as the uh, connection defined on the line bundle uh, uh, of this space time so so it clearly takes values in this group however in this old construction uh, the there is some symmetry which is exactly those uh, transformations which preserve the null direction, but otherwise they they arbitrarily uh, rotate or even conformally rescale the metric. So for this reason, on one hand, the, we consider connection which takes values in a, a bigger group, but then the, the 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 transformations which are allowed take values in smaller group. But but this is just intuition which is behind this although this intuition can can be exactly made, made correct there is a, a equivalent approach to to, 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 to to Cartan's approach which exactly follows this way I think that Pfefferman and Graham, Graham they they did this so they, they they in this way they introduced some conformally covariant um, approach which, which is equivalent to what I'm going to do Maybe I, either I was speaking for too long or I switched off something. Oh, I yeah, sorry. Okay, I was speaking too long and not changing. Or you think that I push that? Yeah. Okay, so. No, this let us quit. Okay, so uh, okay, so this is invariant construction. So uh, given this, uh, given uh, given m and given m and uh, and some conformal geometry on m. So 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 given m and conformal geometry on M, which has signature PQ, we first consider the space of, of um, each, in each point, there is defined a metric, uh, and uh, actually there's defined only conformal class. So at each point M, there are defined metric G times arbitrary number. So the the set of all all those uh, symmetric tensors at a given point, we, we take this set, and then the sum of of all of them. So in this way, we obtain uh, uh, space that has one dimension more than M, and it has a, a structure of 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 fiber bundle. So what is the uh, setting G uh, for GM? What, what is that? So at the tangents. 
So, so G without bracket would be just the metric tensor at the point M. And with the bracket, it is the, the set of, of all Gs which are conformally equivalent to each other. So the difference between two of them is a, a number, positive, positive number. And when you're saying that on the tangent point, you're fixing a set, a subset of P star M. Oh, I see. So you, I see, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is called the ray bundle. And actually this is, this is exactly this null cone which I, which, but but this null cone somehow defined in unembedded way. I just build this, the start construction from building the cone. And now for every point of this, I, now, now to every, uh, and, 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 and now I can consider um, uh, 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 then I can consider Okay, so here the important, the important, uh, so so now I can take a pullback. So so I have here I have projection uh, pi, which projects every point which belongs to the same. So a point which belongs to the same, which projects all the rays into one point. Uh, so I can use the pullback of the, uh, so, so, so here given, uh, and here to, to every point, there corresponds actually one representative of this class. So to this point, there corresponds a representative of this, a specific representative of this class G. So I, and this is the pullback of, uh, uh, at the same time, uh, uh, I can use this, I can define it as a, okay, so, so, so to this point, so, so to this point, there corresponds representative of here. So maybe, maybe I, should, I should depict like this, uh, that, that to, to this point, there corresponds here some representative. And then I take pullback to this point by P star of this representative. So in this way, at every point of this space, I obtain certain symmetric tensor, which is now from the point of view of this M plus one dimensional manifold, it would be a degenerate metric because this metric was non-degenerate here, but now after pulling back, it is degenerate. So, and but, but this is exactly what was the geometry of this null cone, which I depicted before. The geometry of, of null cone is, is the generate. So so to every so for every to every point that corresponds specific representative of the conformal class, and then I take the pullback of this representative here and I obtain a symmetric tensor here. So in this way I obtain a degenerate metric at every point of of this of this uh, uh, manifold, let me see in what way I denoted. Okay, okay. So here I I denoted like this. So and uh, okay. So maybe instead of of tilde here, I should put prime here, and then and then as far as I understand, g tilde is is the pullback. Did you mention that mm -hmm. match with what you're saying in plus two or plus one? Because now up there, the symmetric ones, you are already working in n times n plus one over two, and adding one. I, well, here we added one dimension because this dimension is, yes. is that, that scale. So we have M plus one dimensional manifold and we pull back metric tensors, which were, which have, which are non-degenerate in, in N dimensions. So they have one direction that is one null direction after this pulling back. Okay. And 
So we, so so this space is endowed naturally with a degenerate metric tensor and is also uh, equipped with a null vector field which corresponds to this rescaling. So we have a, a, a fundamental vector field which corresponds to, to this rescaling. And now given this data, we now if, if, if formulate definition of so so now we consider the bundle of frames here however not arbitrary frames we want those frames to be pullback of some frame defined on uh, on uh, uh, m and additional and additional uh, uh, one form which will uh, uh, well which will complete this this frame to to a frame on on p so so we consider so given this metric tensor here we consider all possible frames which correspond to this metric tensor and those frames uh, 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 However, we keep the condition that this last element of the frame is normalized such that uh, the action of this fundamental vector field is always minus one. So for those who are trained in, in general relativity and in null surfaces, uh, what we do here, we, we consider frames such that uh, 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 so, 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 so we can consider this this uh, last uh, last element of frame this this phi. It can be sort of a, a, a null the other null direction, uh, which is transversal to this to this to this uh, usually denoted by n, but. It, so, so we can think of this as the null direction, which is transversal to to a null surface. But if we if we have a metric and we can lower the index, then instead of this vector, which would be maybe n, then we have some f some object which has a lower index. So it is instead of being vector, this is this is a a, a covector. So, so in this way, we we define a, a subbundle of the tangent of, of the bundle of all frames tangent to this space, and there is action of of uh, of the uh, and we fix those frames such that they are orthonormal. So, so such that the this metric tensor becomes some eta a b eta a eta b where eta is fixed so this is some fixed fixed base fixed matrix for example minus one minus one plus one plus one or some little little more more general but sometimes we use null frames so so now the uh, so now the groups, the group, as I said, the group of of in which the connection takes values is this group that it preserves uh, uh, this. So this is a constant metric that has matrix that has signature p plus one, q plus one, assuming that eta has signature pq, and the group of transformations of those frames amounts to the Lorentz, I mean, orthonormal transformations of this theta, which are in the base manifold, plus conformal rescalings, because we can still rescale, we can still rescale those frames. And a uh, and adding to, to this vector phi some 
some and, and transforming this this covector phi. And in this way, we obtain a bundle. So we treat every so so in the other other words, we have we have the bundle p, which is projected to here and then is projected to here and and all together it is it is a bundle a bundle over over m so it can be first projected to to this uh, in this way that we <clears throat> that we just uh, uh, that we uh, that that during projection we we drop we drop the tangent frame, but we remember the scale factor, but then we also drop the scale factor. Or in other words, as it is written here, just to every frame that was uh, corresponding to some point M, we just, we, we just assign M. And th in this way, we, okay, so in this way, we, and this is the action of this, of those, group on the frames so so the so p is a subset of of a sub bundle of the bundle of all the frames so there's some selected frames and the and 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 there is a group of transformations which either transform along those null rays or they rotate the frames and this gives us this this uh, this bundle on which the connection will be defined. If you don't like this bundle, then don't worry, because at the end of the day, we will project ourselves to the base manifold, and we'll just use tensors which follow from this construction, and we'll not have to refer to the bundle. But if we like to know a geometric structure, then, it's, then, then this structure is given, given by this bundle. Are there any questions to this bundle? I'm not going to use this bundle too much because because the main results are, but well it's important for uh, well this is behind all these invariants otherwise if we didn't have this bundle we we wouldn't so easily guess this uh, those formulae which I I later will write it's also invariant for anti Anti yeah, so for the time being here, uh, we don't mention the sitter or anti the sitter. Don't, these are just arbitrary metric tensors. Okay, so now we turn to construction of, so we have a bundle and now any connection of this bundle, any Cartan connection can be called conformal Cartan connection. But we usually want to have something, so to, to, to define something uniquely. So for this, we need some additional conditions. Well, and it turns out that if we assume more what this connection should look like, so for instance, we want the upper uh, row to consist of the, of the elements of this orthonormal frame, and, and by symmetry, it has to be here. And also, if we assume that the curvature has a lot of zeros, and on the other hand, this guy, which is here in the middle, has zero trace, then it turns out that we can find solution to those conditions. And this solution is unique. And so it is unique. It is called normal conformal Cartan connection. So in this way, we, by imposing some additional conditions, we fix a connection on this bundle and we call it normal conformal connection. But now good news for those of you who, who, are, who, who, who are used to work down on, on space time rather than on manifold. We will consider sections of this bundle and we'll pull back everything from the bundle to, to the base manifold. However, what we remember is that whenever we change two sections, then A, which then the pullback of A will transform in the same way as Young Mills fields, and the curvature of A will transform yet simpler. So, so this is the advantage which we have 
from from those very very complicated formulae. And uh, okay, so now it. Uh, one more step is that if we choose sections, then we choose a specific section which even makes things simpler. And if we do it, then the result is the following. So here, down on the manifold M, we obtain the following. That given a orthonormal frame and the corresponding levi civita connection, this uh, Cartan connection the, the the central block of this connection co is just the Levi Civita connection, and the upper row consists of the elements of the frame. However, we, we lowered the index. And the non-trivial part is this, and this is this P, and P is minus scout and tensor. So it's obtained from the Ricci scalar, a Ricci scalar and the Ricci tensor. So in this way, Ricci tensor is sitting in this conformal connection. So this conformal connection is smart enough to know the, the Ricci scalar, the Ricci tensor, but in this strange combination, which is called minus Scouten, uh, Scouten tensor. And now the advantage is that if we rotate this uh, uh, orthonormal frame, then this A transforms according to the generalized Lorentz transformations, orthogonal trans And if we conformally rescale, then this A also has this nice transformation law. Well, except that the, the, the matrix itself is pretty complicated, contains gradient and contains square of gradient. But otherwise, this formula is quite simple and well known from physics. So the curvature of this connection is a curvature. Here there is sitting the vial tensor. So vial tensor becomes element of, of curvature, what it should be. And here is covariant derivative of this two form, uh, one form obtained from the, so this is a vector valued one form obtained from the Scouten tensor. So you can see that if Einstein equations are satisfied, then we have zeros here, zeros here, and only the vial tensor in the middle. Okay, and uh, uh, so we have this, this Cartan connection, we have F, and now we can, one could make first very simple exercise. We, uh, we know that every F like this satisfies the Bianchi identity. So we can write this Bianchi identity, it's for, it's for free satisfied. But now if we work it out uh, uh, entry by entry, then we will recover some identities, differential identities satisfied by the vial tensor and by the Scouten tensor, which will be known, but they, they are just encoded in some compact way. Okay, so now let us turn to four dimensions. And in four dimensions, we have at our disposal one more conformally invariant structure, which is the Hodge dual acting on two forms. So it means that we can consider the Hodge dual of curvature and its covariant derivative. And we can ask what it is. And then it turns out that there are a lot of simplifications and we obtain a lot of zeros and only some terms here where the co coefficients set the tensor. And this is exactly the tensor that is called, that is known as the Bach tensor. And as you can see from the formula it takes, if Einstein equations are satisfied with cosmological constant of arbitrary sign or zero, then indeed the Bach tensor vanishes. And moreover, from the conformal properties of F, this Bach tensor, is, this is a conformal, a conformally invariant property. So you can see explicitly here why we have conformally invariant condition, which is necessary for the Einstein equations. Okay, so our, oh, let me tell you first. So uh, this is some historical example. So whenever we deal with connections, we can always ask about reducibility, about some cases when connection is reducible to some subgroup. So in this case, there is a possibility 
for this connection that this is reducible to algebra SU12. So it turns out, well, this is a sort of theorem that this, it happens if a metric tensor admits a vector field that is null, that is conformal symmetry, that is annihilated by the Weyl tensor, and that is twisting. So if a metric tensor G admits a null vector field which satisfies those properties, then it turns out that the, uh, the, the uh, 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 normal conformal Cartan connection is reducible to, to group SU12. And such metrics are in correspondence with, with so-called Pfefferman metrics, which are known in completely different discipline. This is, these are so-called Cauchy-Riemann structures. So these are, if you embed a real odd dimensional manifold in even dimensional manifold, then the structure which is defined on this manifold is known as Cauchy-Riemann structure. And, and such metrics are used to describe those Cauchy, in this case, three-dimensional Cauchy-Riemann structure. And also Roger Penrose, in, you can find in his book, introduced local twister connection in terms of spinner pairs of spinners. And if you look at this connection, you can easily and compare with what I wrote, you can find you can see that this is spinorial equivalent of, of or correspondence of the connection, normal conformal Cartan connection. And there comes with this connection, there comes the twister equation, which is equation on covariantly constant local twister. And from what I said, it follows that the Pfefferman geometries admit a covariantly constant local twister field. If so in other words, they admit solution to twister equation. So this is a example, historical example of application of those normal conformal connections in two different areas. One is in geometry of Cauchy-Riemann structures. Another one is in, well, it's not really twister theory because this theory of local twisters, it goes in a different direction than, than twisters themselves, but, but well, something related to Roger Penrose into to his twisters. Okay, but this is historical example. Uh, so let me now turn to, to new applications. Okay, but first I have to uh, remind you a certain, um, a certain uh, elements of symplectic geometry on the space of solutions to some uh, equations. So, uh, we uh, we consider in physics we often consider equations that can be deduced from Lagrangian. So what is Lagrangian? Lagrangian is a certain in for me today it is and so there is a space time m like our space time and there is a maximal rank differential form. So if space time is n dimensional. This is n dimensional differential form. And it depends on fields which define the theory. And now to calculate equations of motion of the theory, we calculate variation of this Lagrangian. We integrate by parts and, and at the end we obtain uh, something proportional to the variations of the fields. And this something becomes equations has to vanish if 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 the uh, um, if the variational principle is satisfied plus total uh, plus some exact form which may depend on everything the most important that it is exact so this and if it is exact then this is d of something and this something is called. I call it the symplectic potential current n minus one form. This is a quite simple name, and I'm sure it. Yeah. Delta. What is what? Delta. This delta. Delta delta. He states in the argument of yeah the delta. Okay, so uh, uh, you can. Uh, you can think of this as a vector field tangent to the space of P's. And this vector field is, is so suppose that 
phi is a scalar. So so on on money. So suppose that phi is just a, a, a function on M. So then consider a vector field which has the following lines phi plus epsilon and something. So for this something, I write delta phi d upon d epsilon at epsilon equal to zero. So on space of phi's, there is defined this vector, which which I call, I mean, I would prefer to call it just delta without delta phi. But then delta phi is the action of this vector on phi. Is it? Is it? No. But, but, so delphi is this, yes? OK, so once again, so sorry. So what, what is del? I maybe I'm answering wrong question. I mean, I, I made a good, wrong question. Oh, oh, it means uh, that th these are derivatives of the phi. Yes. Uh, well, probably one would have to in introduce either jet bundles to to uh, 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 define it on on jet bundles, but but on, on the simple example of of uh, phi then this is well just derivatives of of phi so usually uh, we have i could write covariant derivatives so usually we have some um, among the structures which are available we have some connection and those phi's if they are not scalar functions and they are sections of some bundles and and then we know how to calculate Covariant derivatives. So, so then it would be first order covariant derivative, second order, etc. So it means that this Lagrangian depends not only on on. So, so somehow it it is important for us that it that this Lagrangian depends on value of function in point M. It may depend on on value of this covariant derivative at the same point, and maybe of second derivative and up to some finite order. I think that the jet Bundles are the the right geometric tool to to dis to describe it, but I at this didn't want to introduce too too much because it's 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 necessary. It's not ne necessary. Okay, so this theta which appears in this formula is called uh, this it it's called symplectic potential current one and minus one form. Why symplectic? Because if we take second delta and anti-symmetrize, actually this delta can be, it's usually, now it's, the people say this is a bimodal and this is an exterior derivative in, in, in some other directions. But, but just naively, if we think, if we take second variation and then consider such formula, this in case when variations don't commute, if they commute, then this is zero, then we obtain, on space of uh, solutions. Sorry, here is eta, and and that, that should be phi to be consistent with with this notation. So since we, okay, I'm sorry. Since we later use 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 variable theta, this is this frame. I here switch to theta. this theta. This low case theta should be phi. So from this symplectic potential, we construct a certain two form on space of, so on one hand, it is n form on our manifold. On the other hand, it is two form on the space of fields. And it is a um, closed two form. So it is very important if something is closed, then it means if you integrate it, then you have some, some preservation. And that's why now this symplectic uh, potential is not uniquely defined because from this definition you can see you can add exterior derivative of anything and also if we modify lagrangian by adding some exterior derivative then we are not going to change the the euler lagrange equations but we will change 
this theta. However, this change doesn't cause change of the symplectic form. So, so that's why we introduce such things because they are such structures because they satisfy those nice, we always want to define some closed form calculated from our fields because then it satisfies this if we integrate it along some closed surface then it is zero. So if we have two surfaces, and then we can say that integral on one surface is equal, equal to interval on another, and we call it, and we consider this preservation. Okay, so now our idea is the following, that, uh, okay, so since there is not much time, I will go right to the, to the point. We are interested in Einstein equations, and we are interested in solutions to Einstein equations. However, here we have theory, which is described by equations weaker than Einstein equations, which means any uh, uh, solution to our Einstein equations is also a point in, the, in that bigger space. So it means that we can apply the symplectic structures introduced in that bigger space, in particular to solutions to Einstein equations. So in other words, we can pull back from solutions to the from the Bach flat metric tensors, we can pull back everything to the space of uh, Einstein tensors. And this is what we want to do. So we first introduce Lagrangian, which will produce this Bach, uh, which will force the Bach tensor to vanish. So we introduce just a young Mills Lagrangian in which for, for F we take the curvature of the a conformal or normal conformal Cartan connection. Next, we take variation. And even though it's a little different than just Young Mills, because in case of Young Mills theory, independent variable is A. In our case, uh, A is independent variable is, is the orthonormal frame, and A is uh, some sort of secondary variable. However, if we do this calculation, we find that indeed the equations of motion that follow, they are exactly the young means equations. And we obtain the symplectic potential. And so the young means equations, they force the Bach tensor to vanish. So indeed, they are then satisfied by all the Einstein space times. And in addition, we obtain the symplectic uh, potential. However, the symplectic potential of conformal invariant theory. So it is conformally invariant. And now if we work uh, uh, out uh, how much how much it is, it means if we if we insert this connection, specific connection and and, and curvature, then we find that the mm. symplectic potential that we obtain has the following form. It is variation of coframe times Hodge dual of derivative of Scalpen tensor. And remember that Scalpen tensor is proportional to metric tensor in the case of Einstein space time. So, so derivative of this is zero. So in case of Einstein metrics, this first term drops plus variation of gamma times the Weyl tensor. So at the end of the day, on the solutions to Einstein equations, it is, it is just this. And also we, on the other hand, from this formula, we can see that this theta is conformally invariant. So indeed, if we rescale metric by conformal factor, it is it is just unsensitive. So, so due to this property, it it well transforms all the way to infinity. So now in the last several minutes, so I, I think I I already explained this earlier. What is the, our idea? So now. We, okay, so however, still there is some, at this point, there is some puzzle. So on the space of solutions to Einstein equations, we, we introduced a different symplectic uh, structure, seemingly, which has nice properties. We can use it, even not knowing what it is, because it has all the properties which, which, uh, which um, we need which, for the symplectic structure. But on the other hand, there is always question, what is the relation between this structure and this, what we normally use? So in order to answer this question, let me skip the 
the calculations and uh, okay so the conclusion is that we that we can consider so called uh, you, you know about the euler invariant for four dimensional manifolds there exists an euler invariant which is obtained by integrating such four forms so r is just obtained from the riemann isn't it really from the riemann tensor so i i wrote i wrote it like this to because it is not Ricci tensor it is it is a two form obtained from Riemann tensor and and we can and so this is so so called topological term so it turns out that if we add this topological term now i will jump to the end not to so it turns out that if we add this topological term to so if we consider einstein uh, sorry if we consider action for uh, einstein theory so it's almost einstein hilbert action except that this uh, well where where was it um sorry uh, this is einstein hilbert action written in terms of triads so this is einstein hilbert action with cosmological constant however we write it in terms of of in terms of, of orthonormal frames so so it's, it may be considered palatini but 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 connection is still a, a function of 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 metric tensor so it's of frame it's not independent variable and if to this action we add um we add the topological action, this, this Euler term. And notice that here there is lambda. So uh, it means that if lambda were zero, then then, then our uh, uh, Einstein Hilbert part would, would be killed. So then, then we would not gain, we would not have good description of, of our Einstein geometries. However, whenever lambda is not zero, then we can use this equation so so then the conclusion is that if we so here this is written in terms of of uh, symplectic forms but if we just write it for actions then it means that our uh, young mills action for conformal connection it's one fourth of the of the topological euler action minus 16 pi lambda divided by three and the well einstein hilbert palatini action so it means that and and okay this is so okay so it means i mean it's not really equality but but uh mm, okay uh, Okay, it's, it's not really equality, but the equality is the following. If we consider a, a action which 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 has this form, and if we calculate from this the corresponding the corresponding symplectic form, which actually will be then it will be our uh, symplectic form. But on the other hand, it will satisfy this property here. It means it will be the symplectic form of well it will be the it will be the the combination of the corresponding symplectic forms so it means that if we add to einstein hilbert palatini action uh, this topological action and with with suitable coefficients then the result and this we can do for free because we don't change the einstein equations when we add then we will obtain um, then the, the symplectic uh, current corresponding to uh, the symplectic current potential corresponding to this action will be this current potential of this young mills theory imposed on on Cartan normal conformal connection so it will be conformally invariant and this is the point okay and now the last the, now the application so again i will go to the to the so now we go to brute force methods which we use in physics introduce coordinates these are so-called uh, uh, 
Pfefferman Graham coordinates, and they describe they describe um, asymptotic boundary of uh, a conformal boundary of asymptotically the Sitter space time, and then we calculate what is our what is our so 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 the important fields are the zeros order uh, term which gives the background metric and the third order term which gives the so-called holomorphic uh, and uh, uh, stress energy tensor a holographic stress energy tensor which also has nice holomorphic properties and if we calculate our uh, symplectic uh, potential current then it turns out not to develop any infinities it is just given by this data defined holographic data defined on the conformal conformal uh, 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 boundary and the same result is obtained from renormalized einstein hilbert action by adding some terms which go to uh, uh, which uh, which go to infinity in infinity and they and they cancel the infinities so so from this renormalized action people obtain this and when it, it actually agrees with our result um except that we we don't need this renormalizing terms we just obtain this for, for, from symplectic potential which is defined everywhere in space time and just has a nice link okay so this is this is it thank you Energy of momentum can say in the force form analysis would be essentially this holographic energy. Yes, we, we use such notation that this is the same as used in in holography. So so this is the same the same tensor. So we obtain the, the known formula and the correct formula, but in, in such a way that we don't need this re renormalization. So one could say that renormalization is also adding some terms. So we added and, and they added, but we added some terms which are added everywhere in space time. And in this renormalization, what we add works only on the boundary. So, so, so in our case, we have extension of this a potential form of the symplectic potential to every point and it has nice limit at the end and it is at every stage it is well well and finitely defined the cosmological constant has variations within a certain bound of its value it's not exactly a, no. it doesn't need to be exactly a constant ah well here we are assuming it is constant we don't Maybe if you add some matter, then maybe you can also. Well, then, then it's not exactly known what is cosmological constant, what is matter. So, so yeah, yeah. But if you added some some matter, then then, then it may. Then it will be variation of cosmological constant. Perhaps it could be it could be generalized. I, I don't know yet. Mm hmm. Why is it not? Oh, it is not known to generate. You mean this? Uh, uh, you mean this omega here? Right. So, so okay, it's, it's a very good question. For, for general relativity, it is the generate because the, so, so it's not really symplectic. Um, okay, so in order to get from this symplectic, uh, uh, a, a, a symplectic form we would need to integrate it along some uh, surface so so we should assume something about space time that is globally hyperbolic that it has a cauchy surface and then integrate but you are right that it would be still degenerate because this theory has gauge transformations we have we have diffeomorphisms and we also have here rotations of frame so 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 you're right it is it's so properly i should say pre-symplectic or proto-symplectic form which after 
quotienting by gauge transformations becomes um, also non degenerate. It becomes non degenerate. Perfect. Very good. Feel free to stick around and ask more questions.